So we're recording, okay. Looking at uh, David Hume, his abstract for his A Treatise of Human Nature, abstract summary of results, uh, the short version, uh, his own personal cliff notes of his work. A Treatise of Human Nature is an incredibly important book in history of philosophy and a much longer book. I think this abstract is very valuable for us. Because he, you know, he doesn't try to put everything in there, but he gives us a very, very key, crucial treatment of one of the things that he talks about at greater length in, in, in the book, and that is the notion of cause and effect. So we'll be talking about that. That is really the, the, the center of this reading. It's the, the key to this reading, but I thought that, you know, there's something, other things that could remark upon. Um, like everything else that we read after the Mino, starting with Plato's Mino and then moving on, uh, we were, we're reading in a certain context, so it is natural, I think, it's natural for me, and I hope that you're doing the same thing too. When you read a new thing in this context, you're reminded of earlier authors because the similar themes are being treated here, and, and, and there are significant differences. We look at the abstract to A Treatise of Human Nature, and we know that he's thinking of Descartes because he mentions Descartes. Now, you may not be thinking of the aspects of Descartes exactly as uh, they were... Uh, worked out in the discourse on method or the things that we concentrated on, but he's certainly thinking of Descartes in general. And he mentioned skepticism. And I think of that in perhaps as the most important reference for us, the Sexus Empiricus, and you know, thinking about what, how Hume relates to the skeptics and whether he is a skeptic. Uh, he certainly is a, maybe a little coy about that, but he certainly indicates that he, he may be. If we skip ahead, and this may be something to sort of keep in mind as we read through. Uh, on page eight, at the end of the second paragraph, uh, he says, philosophy would render us entirely Peronian were nature, excuse me, were not nature too strong for it. Uh, we may remember that, that term Peronian as referring to a certain school of skepticism. If I'm not mistaken, it was the school of skepticism that Sexus Empiricus distinguished his own from and that the Peronians seem to be the ones who had given up on the search for the criterion of truth, whereas Sextus at least says that he's a member of the school that keeps on searching. Uh, philosophy would render us entirely Peronian. That is, philosophy considered to be the reflection and reasoning on uh, philosophical topics, uh, the nature of reality, good and evil, stuff like that. But crucially for Hume, also um, philosophy is reasoning about what we can know and what our general cognitive relationship is with the world and whether we can really know anything, whether we can go from ignorance to knowledge, the difference between opinion and knowledge, the difference between mere belief and knowledge, the kind of questions that, that were raised in the Mino and taken up by the various authors. That philosophy, that is this form of reasoning, would render us entirely prone as it would make us sort of hopeless skeptics. Were not nature too strong for it? And that nature, of course, is human nature. So he's very famous for saying this, that, that, that reason uh, leads us to skeptical conclusions, but human nature doesn't really take them that seriously. That uh, skepticism is philosophically strong, but practically weak, some, something like that is more famous way he puts it. So how, do we, how are we led to, really the question of the Hume reading is how are we led by the process of reasoning to skeptical conclusions? What does skepticism mean in, in this case? And why is it that nature is too strong for those skeptical conclusions? That is, what is it about human nature that despite our intellectual working out of problems, whatever position we may hold, in terms of our official epistemology, our official theory of knowledge, why is that ignored by human nature? Why don't we? What is uh, skepticism here? I mean, of course, to Sexus Empiricus, to be a skepticist, to, excuse me, to be a skeptic is uh, to reject dogmatism. And dogmatism is assent to any belief without sufficient evidence. And of course, for him, the Aristotelians were dogmatists. And because they accepted the uh, first principles without what they called first principles. Uh, skepticism for Hume, I think, is more focused on uh, the, the kind of problem that Descartes was working on, partially, in the 
discourse on method, and which he could only solve by proving the existence of God. Remember that what he wanted to be able to prove and establish was that he wasn't dreaming, or that the ideas and thoughts that we have while we're awake somehow or another are truer than the ones we have when we're asleep. Um, and what's really at the bottom of that is the notion that our ideas, our sensations, our representations, our thoughts and opinions, whether they actually put us in touch with anything beyond ourselves, whether there is some kind of independent reality composed of substances, that, that is, objects that are, <coughs> you know, that have their own reality, and, and whether we can be said to have true opinions and thoughts about them. Uh, it seems to me that, that Hume, uh, what we should uh, may, maybe anticipate is that Hume comes down on the side of saying we would never be able to establish such a thing, and, and here's why. So we'll be thinking of that. So uh, let's get started then in looking at his argument uh, as an empiricist. We'll talk a little bit about that, uh, and specifically about our normal and absolutely natural disposition to ascribe cause and effect relationships. 